Let's get some tuck here. Those aerodynamics. Lord Kurt, tell us what we're doing today. All right, so we're putting together, obviously, a lithium-ion battery pack. Got some drawings drawn up. It's going to end up being a, a 20S12P setup as it stands. Um, we have the ability to obviously expand it if you'd like. Uh, we have 240 batteries total for that for that uh, setup. We got a couple of them charging up right now. We're going to do a capacity test on that, uh, kind of prove that it is what it says it is. I mean, it's the best batteries that Chinese money can buy. So, but we got our nickel, pure nickel strips, which we're going to spot weld all the parallel connections and then run the series connections afterwards. We got the spot welder here. We got the BMS over there. So we'll get ready to just put them together and then see what we got. Yeah, so we're going to test out every single one of these batteries. I'm just going to leave you guys to the time lapse. I'm sure you don't really care to test every battery with us. So let's get to it. So we went ahead and got all the series connections done on one side so you can look at all these batteries and they're all connected on that side. We're starting off doing the series connections on the top part now. So I'm kind of gluing them in four parallel groups now. And what happens now, this is the first set done with the full series connections made. Uh, this is the first set of cells and the power is going to basically flow through. You always start with the one negative and then your last one you have the positive lead exposed. But you're going to connect the battery here and then it's going to basically add up the voltage as it flows through from here through and then it's going to connect on the bottom here to the next negative and it comes back up, connects on top here and it flows down and it's going to basically work its way through the whole battery pack like that until it's gone the whole way through and then you got all your batteries Voltage adding up basically, mm -hmm. so that makes 72 volts at the end. And we got our segment of backup batteries in, so we're gonna add an extra row of parallel cells, so it'll be 13p at 20s. Yeah. yeah, and that'll yeah. increase range, or is that it'll increase, increase power? the well range? It'll gotcha. make it so it has more amp hours, which together will, with the voltage, make watt hours, which is your range. Cool, yeah. All right, so we just finished the battery. Um, by we, I mean Lord Kurt. <laughs> He's basically been doing this whole thing. Again, I don't have really the technical knowledge, but he figured everything out, and so I'm letting him handle most of it because I don't want to burn my house down. So we just finished it. Go ahead, Lord Kurt. Yeah, we, and by finished, he means we basically got all the series parallel connections in. The last part to go with it that's electrical is put the BMS on, and we got this here ready to go. We'll be working on getting that all attached or some balance wires that will connect and I'll sort of talk through how that's all going to look. But for now we've got to get some wire to run the power, positive and, well negative and positive leads to this and to the charger and the output and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to run to Lowe's actually and grab those real quick and then we'll come back and get everything soldered up. Cool. And if you notice right outside of here, I did finally pull the bike through. Um, so it is in the backyard and we have a lot of space to work on it. So we're going to be able to rip that thing apart pretty quick. And looks like the battery box is gonna fit that battery, hopefully no problem, but that's to be determined. All right, we're gonna run to Lowe's and we'll catch you guys when we get back. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the battery pack that came in the bike. 
We have yet to determine what it is, and exactly how it's made. They did use some high quality cardboard to pack the battery in there, nice and tight. What we'll probably do with the upgrade is use a higher ply cardboard, um, something a little bit more flammable probably. So last video I did explain this, but we pulled out the original battery pack that was in the motorcycle and we found that it actually was lithium ion batteries as much as we thought it was lead acid. But pulling out the battery and the cells in that battery, we did find that it was most likely a used battery or the cells were very cheap and we're not holding much capacity. Today is February 10th. As I'm recording this, it's still inconclusive. We're trying to get a charger to test the batteries in the cells in the original battery pack to see if it's any good or not. If it is good, we can use it to expand the battery pack that we made, um, but if not, we're not gonna mix the cells together, so that's where it's at. All right, well, we just finished, fully finished, right? Fully finished the yeah, battery, the that's it. Good. So we can literally plug this in to the bike right now. Yeah, we decided to not deal with any expansion ports right now, but eventually, we're probably gonna, if we do another set of cells on here, you can just slice this off pull it off and then you'll just have to rewrap it at the end. I did just zip tie all these together so that it kept everything in place, but we have our discharge cables and our charge cables. And so yep. we use the same connectors that the original battery was using so it'll plug straight in. Yep. And all we gotta do then is we'll get in there and charging and see how, how it sits and works, but we'll eventually, just before it's written, have a thing that'll hold it in place so yep. it's not sloshing around in there. Yep. It's a little more efficient than the well, That's the next step, is actually putting this in the bike and, and getting it all situated. See if is the exciting see if it part. Powers it and yeah. get it charging. Yep. Then so we can run some tests, some first initial tests. Didn't blow up. <laughs> Just gonna try firing it up? Not firing it up, but <laughs> turn it on. Yeah. Works. It's got power. Okay, <laughs> nice. <laughs> I think there's just a little tiny rev. Yeah, even so, full throttle. That's freaking faster. Holy. <laughs> That's <laughs> way faster. It's only a half charge Holy right now. Crap. Let's charge it up. Alright, so here's the charger. Nothing special, but let's get it plugged in. Let's right. See what happens. We'll let it cook overnight. It's only got half way to go. It'll probably just take like eight hours. All right, so we got the battery pack in there last night and we actually plugged it in. We turned the bike on and everything. Um, works great. Works absolutely perfectly and flawlessly. And we actually confirmed it did, it sped up the top speed of this bike. So we actually were able to hit 78 kilometers um, with this battery and it's not at its max charge right now. I don't think our charger is gonna get quite there. This charger was from China. They sent me the um, this style of plug. This charger takes a 220 volt input. So I had to get a converter for it and this doesn't operate at max efficiency for this charger. So this charger, I don't think can get this, this battery all the way up to, to 84 volts like it's supposed to be when it's all topped off. So yeah, that's still in the works, but my job right now it is about 3 30 so the sun is starting to go down is to get this battery box installed and actually built <laughs> from scratch as you can see it actually fits pretty well to the sides so all i have to do basically is is prevent it from tipping over 
and I also want to put some foam pad on the bottom to make sure that it absorbs a little bit of shock when you go over bumps, that kind of thing. Luckily, it's sitting between suspension, <laughs> so it doesn't get rattled around too much, but it's still a concern. I just want to make sure it's nicely padded in there so it doesn't get jolted around too much, not too many vibrations. So I did pick up some, these are from the, the original battery, nice thick foam pads. I'm probably gonna reuse these. The adhesive is still fairly good on them. This, these are fresh, um, these ones are fresh. So I'm sure we can reuse that. But I also went to Michael's, picked up, it's a lot thinner, but it still pads pretty decently. It's definitely better than just sitting on hard wood or steel, but those are adhesive strips, but I also got a bit thicker um, foam panels as well. So these will probably be to line the wood. But anyway, I'll just show you guys. I'll just build it and show you guys what I mean. Open eye, feel the waves cut through me. Hypnotized by the sounds I'm breathing in. All right, well here it is. This is basically the final product here. I basically just made a wood frame for it and everywhere it touches the battery box is padded. So the last thing I gotta do is just connect the wires up and then screw in this. I do have to move the screw holes from the original battery, but I gotta put on the cover and then just drill that last hole, screw it in and it's, it's all set. All right, last thing to do is, is just drill the hole in here. All right, so it's the next day. Um, today I'm going to be servicing the front brakes. You guys know how awful these things sound, but it's ready for its first ride basically. We got it all together last night, so I'm just gonna get the brakes. I know I don't have to do this, but it's been so annoying and I've just been wanting to get around to this. Probably the pads are crappy. I'm gonna put some anti-squeak on those, see how it does just right off the bat. Take it on its first test ride and see how it does. And I just noticed my dog must have chewed on this while it was outside. That's why I hate working with animals like that, but it was really the only place we could do it, and that's what I get for it. These brakes are kind of interesting design. I've never really seen any like this. They have two pins that go all the way through and hold the brake pads on. It kind of allows them to slide back and forth. So this one just gets pressed hard against there and then the piston just presses it down. Kind of interesting. Freaking hate having a small driveway. That is the freaking worst. Gonna love it when I upgrade a better house. All right, boys, you ready for this? This, this bike is completely stock exactly how I got it, except different battery. We built a new battery for it. That is the only thing we've changed. Can already tell it's definitely a bit quicker. Brakes didn't squeak right there, that was good. Let's make sure I can actually see the road behind me too. All right. We're up to almost 50 kilometers already. Kilometers per hour already. Uh, there's the classic squeak again. Oh, yikes. That is awful. That's even worse than before, frick. Goodness gracious. Yeah, it's even worse. Definitely quicker than before. We're at 50 kilometers and climbing. 52 kilometers.
Yikes, dude. That is an awful sound. Stop. All right, let's do a legit speed test. Okay, so zero kilometers per hour, full throttle. Let's get some tuck here, those aerodynamics. Ah, we're climbing to mid 50s. All right, we're going home. <laughs> Significantly improved in the sense that it's actually not like stupid slow anymore, I guess. It'll get you up to like 30 something pretty quick. Not bad. Yeah, it's definitely a lot quicker than it was before. Definitely a lot quicker. We're already up to 40 kilometers per hour. Climb into 50. Much better, much better. All right, so that was the first ride. It does have more power definitely than it did on the original battery. Um, the brakes were stupid squeaky though, so I didn't really want to ride any more than I did. But I really just want to get that initial first impression if it's going to be faster or not than it was before. It definitely is. It goes zero to 55 kilometers per hour a lot faster. I mean, this one couldn't even reach it. The original battery couldn't even reach 55 kilometers per hour. This one, <laughs> this one shoots you up to it pretty quick. Stop laughing at me. <laughs> But yeah, this new battery shoots you up to zero to 55 pretty quick. Stop laughing. <laughs> shoots you up zero, stop. But this battery shoots you zero to 55 pretty quick and it's pretty consistent. Gets you up to at least 55 kilometers per hour. I think Lord Kurt told me it's gonna go for an hour at, at peak output. So if I'm going, if it's putting out 3000 watts, this battery should sustain that for one hour of time, which is a lot. I mean, you're never gonna be, I mean, you may be hard on the throttle, but anyway, it's gonna go for a while and it didn't drop at all, so that's encouraging. So next order of business is, I'm gonna wash this thing. It has dust all over it. It's been sitting in the garage before we've you know, started to work on it. So we're gonna wash it, and then I'm gonna slap some decals on it, and uh, we'll go from there. Alright guys, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. So next video you're gonna see is actually the entire build process from start to finish of the battery that we made, the lithium ion battery. Um, it's step by step. We explain all the math and science behind everything and exactly how to build it yourself. So that's the next one you're gonna see. But next time, when we're working on this bike, I do need to get those brakes from squeaking. Those things are extremely loud and I hate it. Um, so that's next up. And we also definitely need to upgrade the motor at some point. Laura, Kurt and I are working on some plans to get some more juice. And also next time we're gonna be trying to program this controller. It's a Votol EM100 controller. I, I, I know it's programmable, but I had a really hard time, struggled with it last time. So I did get a new connector for it. Um, I think it was just the wire I was using wasn't allowing it to, to connect correctly. So I do have a new wire for it. So that's next up. That is the very next video that we're doing. So basically fixing the brakes, trying to program it because we think that it's not getting 3000 watts to the hub motor because it should, 3000 watt hub motor like this realistically should get you to at least 40 something miles per hour pretty easily if it's actually receiving 3000 watts. We just don't think it is. I think the controller is limiting it or that fuse box, I don't know. But there's stuff we can figure out that this this motor realistically should get us more performance than it's getting right now. Yeah, so that's pretty much it guys. Again, thank you for watching. I'll catch you on the next video. Stay tuned. I'm super excited for this build. See you next time. <laughs>